I don't know why, but I seem to go down a lot of Marvel Universe YouTube rabbit holes, and there is so much analysis of Marvel characters and superheroes and all that stuff. I mean, so much in-depth thought on what is going to happen. And the twist to all this in-depth insight and speculation is that we know what's going to happen. Sure, there's a galaxy worth of little things, details, nods, and inside jokes, but overall, folks act like they don't know how stuff is going to end. We all know, first of all, it's written in comic books. Every ant, they're pulling all this stuff from comic books that are already out there. They already exist. Case in point, there's a couple big movies coming out in the next few years, the uh, Infinity War stuff. In one of the movies, they refuse to even release the title to it because apparently it will be too much of a spoiler, a big time spoiler. The name of the movie will spoil the other movies. But all it takes is one or two clicks to find out the name of that movie. And the title of that movie is The Fallen Soldier or Captain Dead America, something like that. Something about Captain America being dead, right? And what is that based on? Well, that's based on the comic books that have been out for like a decade. And what does it mean? It means that in the movie, that movie, or the prior movie, Captain America is gonna die. We all know it, it's happening. Okay, also, it's a movie. The other thing we always know with movies is the good guys always prevail. I didn't say they always win, I didn't say they always survive, but the good guys will prevail. The side of good will prevail. The bad guys always lose. I didn't say die, I didn't say go to jail, they lose. Whatever lose is, they lose. This guy Thanos, the big purple guy, he kinda looks like the shack of outer space. He kinda looks like the Greg Odin of the Galactagons. This guy will lose or be diminished or contained or marginalized or killed and the good guys or whatever the representation of the good guys will win. But why? So why? Why do we even go? Why go to the movies? Why go see this? Why spend three hours or whatever it is, three hours plus three hours plus two and a half hours, and then you gotta go see the other side movies, and then there's another two hours of those, when we know what's gonna happen? Aren't we a culture? Aren't we a, a body of people who are all about results? All about the end game? It's all about who wins the chip, the ring, right? That's it. That's all we care about. At least that's what they tell you. That's what they tell you. And if they keep telling you that, you start to believe it. I reject that. We do not just care about the ring. And anybody who tells you that, just slap them right in the face with your mind. And the reason we keep going is because we want to see how it happened. When you go down the street and you see a car accident and you look and turn, you don't want to just see a wrecked car and a bloody body. You want to see it and you want to figure out how did it get that way. Right? We're not just drawn to tragedy or catastrophe or ugly scenes. We want to know how things got there. Right? We want to know who, who is failing, who shapes, who emerges, who lays the knockout blow. We want all the challenges right in front of us and we want to see how people overcame those challenges. Okay? Now, the NBA. Folks want to complain. They want to complain about the fact that the NBA is ruined or boring, right? This is all very cliche right now. They want to act like we're watching all season long just in anticipation of which team is going to win that last game in June. That's all we care about, right? And everything is either a culmination to that or a waste of your time. All right, so let's discount all the drama all season long. Let's just discount it all like it never even existed. Another thing, it's kind of like these, you know, 20, 30 year marriages, right? If somebody gets divorced, the whole world looks at that marriage as if it was a failure, right? No, that's not right. You had 30 years of success and then a year or three that it didn't work out, but you can still hold and cherish that 30 years and hold it up because that was part of the process, right? You might have kids from that relationship and that's something to cherish. And that's part of the process, the getting here. Because honestly, if you look at life in general, we all know how it's gonna end. Your body's gonna be decomposing under the ground, right? Maggots will start living inside of your corpse. That's the end. That's the end for everybody. Or you get burned to a crisp and your ashes get spread over some lake, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. 
Sometimes old people just die on their couch and sit there for months to be found by some landlord looking for the rent. You know how often that happens? That, ha that happens a lot, right? So it's not about the end. I've demonstrated that it is not about the end. It's not about how it ends. We are much more inclined to enjoy the process, how we are getting there. Every single game on its own is an individual drama. And if you really like basketball, you understand that. Every single game has a complete story arc and a finale. And it comes to an end and somebody is awarded the winner. Somebody gets player of the game. There's post-game analysis. Every game is a microcosm of the entire season. It's its own tragedy and celebration of basketball. You're trying to tell me with all these people averaging 30 points a game and these in insane stats we're putting up, we couldn't enjoy a single game here or there and call this season a success. No, we had to call it boring because one team happened to be so much damn better than everybody else, right? So it's not a success. I mean, really, why do folks even try in life? Why are you even trying? We all know how it ends. The process is the story. And the story is what we enjoy. Do you know how many movies you've gone to see or people have gone to see and they're like, ah, the ending kind of sucked, but it was a pretty good movie. If we judged movies like we judged the NBA season, everything would depend on the last two minutes of that movie. You know how many movies we get horrible ass reviews because of some crappy way that it ended? Even TV shows. Let's, let's, let's look at some of the great TV shows. The Sopranos, right? People crapped all over that ending, right? So that seven year long series would have been destroyed because of the final two minutes, right? They couldn't deliver in the clutch. Could not deliver in the clutch. I mean, really, movies and fiction, they tell us, they tell us how to survive in this world. And there's no other genre that nails us on the head than the superhero Marvel Universe because they're starting to string these movies together over a long period of years, right? So we're getting a building process. Even the endings in individual movies are not the endings, right? They just lead to the next thing. It's like the regular season. It's like, reg it's like seasons. It's like the four seasons in the 80s where the Lakers and the Celtics met in the finals three separate times over four years. That whole four-year block is now starting to be recognized and judged as a single entity. This was a period of time, right? This whole process was part of something that was larger, each individual game. And you can look and you can drill down to individual games and individual moments and still enjoy those times. And this is even more to prove my point about moments. You know when we talk about that Jordan 61 points in the garden? He lost that game to Bird in the playoffs, right? But we can start to cherish those individual moments when time moves on. We look at Allen Iverson stepping over Tyron Lue. We enjoy that moment. We have no context of the rest of the game. Some of us do, I do, but most of us don't. Dunks in general, slam dunks in general, are a slap in the face again to everybody who says we can't enjoy the whole season because the end product, we already know what's gonna happen. Every dunk can be celebrated. Every dunk is celebrated. It's a moment that you're snatched out of reality and you're thrown into this moment and you enjoy the heck out of it. But I made a video about that, so you better go watch it. Also, come on, just like the video. Take a half a second and like it, I'm gonna keep talking. Players averaging 30 points a game for an entire season, that means they, have, they scored 30 points a game for 82 games. Sometimes they scored much more, sometimes they scored less. But that means that they were putting on a show every game. And even if it's cheap, I mean, this year, three players averaged triple doubles. Three. And yes, I said three. Because really, what are we, four? Are we four years old? Did we just discover the number 10? Did we just learn that we can count to this many? What's our fascination with 10? 10, what is it? Like, what's the big freaking deal? 10, it's not even that significant, man. 13 is more significant. And that, but that goes on to our whole naming culture. If you can give something a catchy name, it has a chance to catch on and be important. That's a whole different video. But what I'm saying is sure, sure, in my mind, three players average a triple-double. Because really, it's kind of insane to me that this stat line right here is historic, never before done, and it gets vaulted into the cherished elevated category of its own. But this line maybe gets a mention that night, but it sure ain't getting talked about tomorrow. And even though I have a real appreciation for a player like Draymond, this line right here gets a headline. This line right here gets mentioned. 
It's a triple-double hack. This triple-double is a hack. Not like a hack like a fraud, not a hack like a cheat, but a hack like a life hack. That's how you hack a triple-double, but it still gets a mention and a storyline. In my mind, these season stats are just as good as these season stats. And if we're gonna call this triple-double land, that's triple-double land to me too. You know what? That's what, I, that's what I think about. That's what I care about. Anyway, this is just a rant, and it's a feeling. And I just want all of y'all to stop talking about the season and how the NBA was ruined. And here we go. Let's do it. Let's talk about Kevin Durant. There's almost no other storyline that is more reliable and useful than the good guy gone bad, only to go good again. We saw it in the Marvel Universe. We saw it with Bucky. We saw it with Captain America. For fans, you get to ride along and fan out for the dark side a little bit. You get to experience the bad side, inhabit the persona, and see the world from that view, and even engage in some confrontation within your sports world, your Twitter, your YouTube comments, your YouTube videos. And still you get to live your regular ass life as an insurance agent down at Edward Jones in Topeka. But if you don't recognize the hate you feel in your heart, the passion you have for crapping on a player every second of your day, the disgust you feel each time that player just tries to live, you must understand you, my dear viewer, are being entertained. If something happens in one of these movies that makes you mad or even sad, you still categorize that as a good movie. Why do folks even go to movies that make them cry? or make them scared or anxious? Why do they intentionally put themselves in a situation to feel those emotions? Because in movies, we understand that any extreme emotion is entertainment. It's because we recognize our suspension of disbelief, but in sports, for some reason, we attach it so much to reality, like it's Bob down at the bank trying to rob you or something. No, there is no Bob. There is no bank, okay? It's a show. It's a show. I mean, really, you go to these movies by choice, on purpose, and most times specifically because it's going to trigger that emotion. People can have the answers. Some days you wake up and you're like, I feel like laughing today. Today, you know what? I feel like going to see a thriller, right? Today, I feel like being a sad sack, right? So let's go see The Notebook, right? You can get the same feeling out of sports. You just have to accept that it's entertainment. So you have to enjoy your hate. You have to enjoy your hatin' ass feelings. Enjoy the hate. That's part of the game. And that's how entertainment works. It's on a damn stage with lighting and tickets and popcorn. It checks off all those boxes. It's a duck, man. It's walking like a duck. It's a duck. Some arenas even use theater lighting. You ever see Staples or Madison Square Garden where the crowd, if you, if you ever get a shot of the full crowd, it's dark, it's kind of dim. That's because they blast all the lights on the court and they don't direct their lights to the stands. It's called theater lighting. It allows you to even escape your body even more and focus on the show. I think it looks dim and crappy as hell. I don't think it works in basketball, but that's the point. Especially in Hollywood or in LA, they understand. They put all the light on the court because that's the show. Other stadiums, other arenas, they light up the whole crowd. They like to play up the angle that the crowd is part of the show. And that works. I get it. But the people who really understand it in New York and L.A., they understand it and they put the lights on the show. It also allows you to not notice and not be distracted by the crowd and focus on the show. That's a technique, man. To focus attention, allow folks to drop the self and live in the drama of the show. Okay, so we know the title of the next few movies, right? In the NBA. We know. We know where it's going to end. But the fun part will be how does it all play out? How do we get from point A to point B? Who's going to be the star? Where is our drama going to come from? Okay, who's our next KD? Do we forgive KD? Do we move on? Villain. Who's our next hero who comes out of nowhere? Who's the next Steph Curry? Who's the next journeyman who finds the right place at the right time? Who's the next guy who becomes his first time all-star? Who's the rookie phenomenon who's gonna come out and change the game, right? Who's the man off the bench that's gonna win a game at the buzzer? Who? How? Where? We care about these things. And like Marvel, it's a character study. These movies are all about relationships and how they play out. We have a Thor movie, we have a Cap movie, we have a Spider-Man movie. 
and they solve your little side problems and your little side areas. But then we have the big Avenger movies where all the great get together and kick some big character ass. These are like our championships. So within the process, we get the individual narratives and drama. You get your Dion Waiters, you get your Andrew Wiggins. Andrew, that's a, doesn't seem like his name. Andrew's a weird looking, he's a weird dude. I feel like Andrew Wiggins might be like some sort of alien. And not, it's just kind of kind of the way he looks. Not his like, it's like his facial structure and also kind of the way he behaves. He just feels like he's not from here. I know he's Canadian, but even more, even more so. Just like not from here. Like here being Earth. Get your Wiggins, to your Harrison Barnes, even to Russell Westbrook. You get all these players, you know, get these players being forced to face their rivals, forced to face the man who stabbed him in the back, forced to face that team who traded you because they said you suck and we don't care about you anymore. And the best thing for us is to get you out of here. You gotta go back. You even get to see, you can plan around, you can plan your day. You can ask for the day off of work for that day because it's on the schedule. You get to see the marked days when the drama is there and present, right? It is there like a movie release schedule. Like the full plan for the Marvel Universe, you get to see the dates releasing now. The part two of the Cavs Warriors drama after Christmas Day game during the regular season, you get to see when it's scheduled. That, that is why it is a show. That is why you should enjoy it. Enjoy all of it. Just like in the development of the movies, just like this whole Marvel Universe, the fans get what the collective fan heart wants. We wanted to see all these guys together. We wanted to see the Avengers. We wanted to see all these particular characters. You think they're not listening to the fans when they add a new character or decide who's going to be added to the group? There's hundreds, if not thousands, of characters from the Marvel comic books and Marvel canon. So they're in tune with who the people want. And just like that, in the NBA, the fan gets what the fan heart desires. The NBA gets what the collective fan heart desires. And for the most part, exactly what we think is going to happen is going to happen. So let's explore that for a half second here. When was the last complete surprise championship? Was it Detroit? Maybe. I don't think they're much of a surprise. I just think that the, the people around the NBA hadn't really caught up and started telling that story until it was too late. There was a bigger story in town, and that, that was the, uh, the lumbering demise of the Lakers as they uh, slowly tumbled down the stairs like an overweight elderly man on a third floor walk up. He came down slowly, they tumbled, they shook the building, and that was the end. But I think it was really if you go back, it was like the 79 Warriors when they swept the Washington Bullets. Look at that game, study it, and watch that game. Look at that series. That was an upset. That was a surprise. But it still wasn't. Because we always get what we want, whether it's the dream team. Everybody wanted to see the best players in the world play together. We just didn't have the vehicle for it. So the NBA made it up. Basketball made it up. They made up the vehicle for us to see what we always wanted. Whether it was Jordan coming back after two seasons away at baseball, we all wanted it. Whatever the reason was, we all wanted it. We wanted it to come back, and, and in tapping, for whatever reasons, we always get what we want in basketball. Even LeBron coming back to Cleveland. It was only a year after he left to go to South Beach where people were saying, well, he could come back. He might come back. He may come back. People said that stuff, and it was outrageous back then. But you know what? That makes for a damn good storyline for him to come back, and guess what? We all know. And yes, even KD, going to, the, going to the Warriors. We all wanted these things before it happened. And don't even try to say you didn't want KD to Golden State. Of course we wanted it. We wanted to know how good one single team could be. It's a dream what if video. But guess what? We got it. We got the what if. We saw what it was. And it was exactly what we expected it to be. And it was damn enjoyable. The big stuff we want, we get. Okay? And that's how it works. Just like the Marvel Universe, it's all laid out for us. They put it out, we build towards some big event, and we enjoy every step of the way. We pay our individual dollars for individual movies. But we're all in this for the long haul because we're enjoying the process. And that's it. So subscribe, like, get involved. 
our topics are not timely, our topics are not topical, but our topics are timeless. This is the best NBA channel on this whole damn thing and the channel of the summer.